Tonight we're going to have some quantum physics, so hold on to your hat because Kansas is going bye-bye. <laughs> okay, well tonight we're going scientific. We come at it from the religious and the spiritual and the philosophical. We're going science tonight. I met Gordon today and I thought, oh, Gordon would love a, lo a science night here. And we were having great discussions. Gordon was telling me about the, the, the probes and the ships that had been set up to, to explore the solar system and they're reporting back that, that the laws of gravity do not hold. Uh, and just that very idea that gravity seems to be such a common thing. You know, when we're studying physics and when we're studying science in high school and college, you know, that's one of the laws that you just think are just there, you know, one of the laws of the universe. Not something that's flexible or pliant that may or may not be true. And so tonight we're going to go into science and, and before we get too deep into it, let's, let's go back. Um, Europe has a lot to do with science. Um, who remembers uh, Copernicus? No, never met him. Never met him? <laughs> Not personally. No. <laughs> Copernicus uh, came along. A lot of these people that come along in science, uh, they're kind of like, they're kind of like outcast and black sheep. Uh, you know, when we have Europe, we have the church, we have what the church says, and all of a sudden the scientists come along. Anybody remember what what Copernicus was famous for? Yes. <laughs> the woman from France has got it. <laughs> yes, that the, it seems as if before Copernicus, they, everybody believed that, uh, that the earth was like the center of the universe and that the, the sun and the planets all revolved around earth. So he comes along and it's this novel idea that no earth and the planets revolve around our sun in our solar system. That's a pretty big reversal. Think of all the centuries ahead of Copernicus that they had it wrong and then Copernicus, Copernicus comes along. And then uh, Sir Isaac Newton. Anybody remember Newton? Yes. Most of the science that we learned when we were going through high school and university and everything was Newtonian physics. So we can go back, trace it back to Isaac Newton and the laws of the universe that we have. And tonight we're going to go uh, even a little deeper to quantum physics. Now, quantum physics has been around for maybe six and a half decades. Some of you remember uh, splitting the atom and some of the early work with the subatomic particles, Max Planck and of course, Einstein was very famous for, uh, for the splitting the atom and so on and so forth, and nuclear power and so forth. But what we're looking at here in quantum physics is basically that uh, Isaac Newton came up with the scientific method, used instruments to measure about the objects that we perceive in this world and, and come up with the laws of physics that govern the objects of this world. And when quantum physics came along, uh, they were doing these experiments and they started to find out very strange things with these experiments because they found out that, that things appeared in the experiments based on where the experimenter wanted them to appear. Which is not good for the scientific method because it gets kind of subjective if, if the outcome of the experiment is influenced by the consciousness of the experiment. And so what we're going to do is start off tonight with a with kind of a cartoon that it's at the end of this movie, What the Bleep Down the Rabbit Hole. Uh, and then we'll get into talking about some quantum physics concepts like superposition. How many in the room have heard of superposition before? Okay. It's like a real basic uh, fundamental law of, of quantum physics, but it's it's mind-blowing. <laughs> Even the simplest of concepts in quantum physics are absolutely, totally mind-blowing. So, 
We'll have Thomas roll it. We're first going to watch a clip. This is a cartoon that basically is designed to show you that uh, beyond what we know as two dimensions and three dimensions, there are other dimensions that are still incomprehensible to the mind. It just hasn't reached a state of, of advancement yet to be able to comprehend these. So we're, this little skit is showing how frightening it can seem when your mind is accustomed to example, what if it was all two-dimensional world and suddenly a third dimension was introduced in a two-dimensional world. It can seem very frightening because it seems to go beyond what is known into the unknown. And so this little skit uh, Thomas is going to show is from the very end of what, Down the Rabbit Hole.